Jewish audio on Chabad.org. Rambam Mishneh Torah, Hilchis Bikurim, the laws of the first fruits, which also include the detailed laws of setting aside the challah, the first dough, giving it to the Kohen, and the Rambam earlier explained many, many detailed laws as to how this works. Pedic Shmini, chapter 8. What if somebody decides, Hamafrish Chalosei Kemach, he's going to set aside his chala gift while it's still in the raw state of flour, before it gets mixed with the water. Now we learn that the obligation does not really kick in until the flour is mixed with water. He decided to be different. He's going to allocate it while it's still in a state of flour. Says the Rambam, It's not considered chala. And the Kohen should return it. And the expression here is, and if the Kohen refuses to return it, he's stealing it. Because it's not chala until it becomes dough. Flour without water is not dough. Furthermore, because it's not chala, ushar ho'iso, chayebes bechala, and the rest of the dough needs to be, chala needs to be taken from it. And that flour, which was set aside for chala, if it has the minimum size of the omer, and he makes a dough out of it, then he sets aside challah from it. The minimum size of Omer, the definition of Omer according to the Kahat Chumash chart, 2.61 quarts or 2.475 liters. Again, 2.61 quarts. If that's the volume of the dough, and he makes it a dough, he must set aside challah, Kishar kol kemach chulin. Just as the law applies when somebody makes dough from any other ordinary everyday flour. Base to a mosaim afishin chala. At what point in time should one actually set aside the chala? When does the obligation kick in? A mosaim afishin chala. When do we set aside the chala? Kishayit and esamayim. When he places the water. And the flour becomes mixed with water. He then sets aside the challah from the beginnings of that dough which was needed. As it says, The beginnings of your dough. The who provided that shall yeshoer sham when does this apply, provided that there is no measure of unmixed flour, of raw flour, that did not become intermingled with water the size of an omer. But if there is, then it was set aside prematurely. Omar, what if he said, this piece of dough, which I am now setting aside as chala, is chala al ha'isa for the dough. The al haser and for the yeast, v'al kemach and for the flour shenishtayer that's left over. <coughs> so he actually verbalizes and states that this dough that he's now setting aside incorporates everything that is mixed and not mixed. And when it will all be one big dough. At that point in time, that piece of dough in his hand will become sanctified as challah. Remember, we learned earlier, challah is holy food, like truma. Then, even though the entire dough had not yet been mixed, but he made this clear statement that that which I'm doing now will kick in. When everything is mixed, technically that works as well. Which, as the commentaries point out, also 
is a statement which is also part of the first law, that if somebody has only flour and he sets it aside, if he made a condition that when this flour is mixed with water, it will be challah, then there are those who say that could work as long as he specifies that it will happen and it will kick in later. Gimel 3... What if he set aside the piece of dough until he needed everything? And then he mixed it. And then he set aside. That's no problem. Now, what happens if he doesn't set aside the gift to the coin while it's still dough? He baked everything. Can he set aside the challah from the baked goods? There's no reason why he can't set aside challah from the bread. As was already explained in great detail in chapter 6, halacha 16. Dalid, at, one po- at what point in time does the obligation kick in to have to take challah from the dough? So here he gives a very clear definition. If he's using wheat, when the wheat flour was rolled into a ball, like a ball of dough, and all of the flour becomes mixed with the water. That's if it's wheat. Or shetitam What if it's not wheat? It's barley. Barley has somewhat of a different makeup when it becomes one single. Mass, it all becomes one block and one body. Not necessarily round in the case of barley. So that is when it kicks in. <coughs> with the wheat, when it becomes round, a round bowl. With the barley, when it becomes a mass or a block. And until that point in time, one may snack. Minoisa from the dough, Acha disgalgo bachitin until it becomes a ball of dough. If it's wheat, Vititamtem basenum or a block of dough if it's barley. Now, what if it's not wheat and it's not barley? What if it is vahakusmin, spelt? Kechitim is like wheat and it has to become a ball. Vishibailis shuel, vehashifein. And oat and rye, as he translates it here, kisaidim have the makeup like barley, and they have to become one block. Hey, nizgalgalo bechitim, v'nitam tama bisaidim. What if it became a ball of dough in wheat and related grains? What if it became a block of dough in barley and related grains? Ha'echal mi menakaidim afroshes chala. Then, once it reaches that point, if somebody eats from it, before the challah gift was set aside, chayov misa. This is actually called partaking from tevel. Just as in the case of truma, it's a very serious transgression. And there is a heavenly death penalty imposed. Mipnei shehi tevel, this is called tevel. It's called produce from which the Kohen's gift was not set aside. If it was a biblical obligation, which means it was in Israel, and so on. If anybody eats from it, and there are witnesses who see him and warn him, <coughs> there could also be the lashes that could kick in under certain circumstances. This law would apply just as the Teva law with regular Truma applies. We learned that in great detail earlier in the laws of Truma. However, 
What if it was only a rabbinic obligation of chala? Makanese makas mardis, then the only possible ashes that could ever take place for a rabbinic transgression is a rabbinic rebellious type lashes we learned about many times earlier. Vav 6, to complicate the plot, Isa ado shenigma, which becomes mixed with flour, that is truma, that's called dimua, nigma, you have regular dough mixed with truma dough. Achalate is galgal until it's rolled into a ball, ptura, it's exempt. As we talked earlier, Mishit is Galgo, once it's rolled into a ball, Chayebis, it's obligated. The Chena Magdish, he saw, say, so also if somebody sanctifies his dough, I am so somebody declares it public, ownerless, Kedim Shin is Galgola, before it's rolled into a ball, Ufdo, and then he redeemed it, Ezachabo, and he acquired it, Vahakach Gilgola, and then he made it into a ball, a Higdish, or he sanctified it, a Hipkeres, or declared it. Owner this Ahashin is Galgala. After it was rolled into a ball of Dor, and he redeemed the Rezachaba, Harezu Chayav is Bechali, he's obligated in Chala because the obligation kicks in, and there's no reason why he should not. Zayin Igdisha, but if he sanctified it, Kedem Shit is Galgal, before he rolled it into a ball. So therefore, the Halacha dictates that the obligation did not yet kick in. When his Galgala, Biada Hegdish, and then it was only rolled into a ball when it was owned by the Beis Hamigdash. And then only later he redeems it. Petura is exempt. Because at the moment when the obligation kicks in, it was exempt. And similarly speaking, these are obligations which only pertain to a Jew. These obligations do not pertain to a non-Jew. But, what if a Gentile? He appointed a Jew to need a dough for him. And he gave it to him as a gift. If he did it before it was rolled into a ball, which we said is that kicking point, Chayabas is obligated. But if he did that, after it was rolled into a ball, Ptura, he's, he's exempt because then it belongs not to the Jew, but to the non-Jew. Along the same lines, Ger Shenizgayer, what if a convert converts? And he has dough, Nizgal actually, Nizgayer, so the question is now he converted. Now he's 100% Jewish. We say, For a Jew and a convert, the law is the same. If it was rolled into a ball of dough before he converted, then he's exempt. Because at the time of conversion, there's no obligation that kicks in. But if he rolled it into a ball after conversion, he's obligated. If he one is unsure, Chayev is bechala, the, the obligation of chala should kick in. In doubt? <coughs> Excuse me. Lefi, <coughs> because Shehu avain misa, because it is a life and death commandment. <coughs> we said earlier, there is the heavenly death penalty. However, what if a non kohen consumed this doubtful dough? He does not have to add the one-fifth when he makes restitution, since there's a doubt concerning the matter. So he has to make restitution, but not give the fifth. Yud, we know that the dough of challah must be maintained in a state of ritual purity. We're talking about back then when ritual purity was observed during the Beis Hamigdash time. If there was a dough 
that doubt kicked in before it became a ball of dough, Yasena Betuma, he should make it in a state of impurity. How could he take dough and make it in a state of impurity? The answer is, because before the holiness kicks in, why not? You're allowed to take regular dough and, and, and make it impure. It's not holy. Now, what do you do with the challah? So, the law of impure challah mirrors the law of impure truma. The tisarev chalosa, the Kohen uses it for fuel. It is consumed, you know, the Kohen needs fuel too. So just as the truma acts as fuel for the Kohen, the challah does as well. Neiladla achar shin is galgala, sophic tuma, once it was rolled into a ball of dough, if there came about a doubt of impurity, shevado metames achol minatayr, where if one was certain, it would clearly defile this biblically. Then the solution is he completes creating this dough in a state of purity. Anything where, if it certainly would have defiled regular dough, Gozru, our sages decreed, when there's a doubt, in a case of regular everyday dough, which are tevel for chala which means from which Chala has not been set aside, the decree is that they should not defile the Tehel below the Chala because they are Tebel for Chala, Chala and then the Chala is dependent. It might be impure and it might be pure. It can't be eaten because it's not pure. It can't be used as, as fuel because it might be pure. So in that case, it just sits there. Yud Aleph 11, Layasa Adam Isasei Betumen Lachatchila. A person should not process a dough in a state of defilement to begin with, but a person must take care in, to begin with to re- retain ritual purity during the time that people did that. Ela Yizor, he should be meticulously careful, v'yistadol, and he should make an effort, the <coughs> attire that he should be pure, both who, both the person, Bekelev, and his vessels, and his utensils, today, in order that Lahapish Chala should be in a position to set aside pure, undefiled Chala. What if there is between him and the water more than four mils? I guess he means the water of mikveh, where he can go purify himself. In that case, more than four meals, he's not obligated to go, and he can make it in a state of impurity and set aside the chala in a state of impurity. Okay? A meal, according to the Kahat Chumash chart, is 0.6 of a mile. I guess uh, pretty close to a kilometer. Point, what's a kilometer? Six point six of a mile is a meal. Okay, very good. So if it's more than four meals, he's not obligated to do that. Yud beis a nation chalas amores betora. Now mirroring the laws we had with truma, we now have a similar problem with chala. We're not allowed to make the chala of someone who is unlearned in a state of purity. Abel Eisen Isas Chulun Betahara. But we can make everyday dough in a state of purity. But if we make the challah in a state of purity, then we're going to put it in the hands of the unlearned man and he's going to defile it. So we're contributing to his sin. Ketzad, spell it out. Megabalo Isa. Zehachaver, a chaver, which means a learned person, may mix the dough, and set aside the chala portion, and that it's important that the type of vessel he puts it in is not the type of vessel 
that can cause impurity to come upon it. There are certain materials, such as metal, that become impure. But there are certain materials, such as stone or clay, that do not become impure. It's when the unlearned person comes. He takes both. So he saw the dove, yes, a challah and the challah. And he says to him, listen, my friend, he said, be very careful, shall I take a challah that you not touch the challah? We have to assume the unlearned man is in a state of impurity. But it's in the type of vessel that won't carry it over. Shema tachzer litibla. So we warn the guy and we tell him a myth. We tell him something that's not 100% correct. We say, if you'll touch this, it will be restored to a state of tevel, where you'll have to do it again, take the challah again. But that's not true. The worst that will happen is it will become impure. Okay, my is, uh, why do we allow misrepresentation? Because the learned guy who makes dough for a livelihood, he needs to make a living too. And therefore, there was a liberty taken in order for this man to be able to make a living. Yud Gimel, along the same lines, Ishes Chover, the wife of a learned person, Merakedes Ubeireres in Meshes Amoritz, may sift and strain flour together with the wife of an unlearned person. Avol, but, again, we're concerned with the wife of an unlearned person that she does not maintain ritual purity. That's before we add water to the dough because it doesn't become impure because it was never exposed to water. It has to be muksher. It has to be readied to receive impurity. As we will learn in great detail in the laws of purity and impurity. But when she puts water in, then it is already fit to become impure. The Neshiyesa Isasa Betuma. So now the wife of the learned man is helping the wife of the unlearned man make her dough in a state of impurity. So that's contributing to that transgression. And similarly speaking, what about a baker? The baker doesn't know from the laws of purity. He's a regular guy. So we're concerned, working with this baker who doesn't maintain ritual purity. Again, back then, when some did and some didn't. In that case, one should not need or work dough together with him. Why? Because the rule of thumb is that being that it's a time when people have to go to the Beis HaMikdash, and people who don't know will bring about a serious violation going into the Beis HaMikdash with something that's impure, or making challah impure, she'ein marzik in Yedei we can't contribute to the transgression of those who do transgressions. We can't help them transgress. The same Torah was given to the scholar as to the unlearned person. However, we may transport bread along with an unlearned person to the bakery. That's a different rule, and that is permissible. What if it's not Israel proper, but it's Syria, which only has a rabbinic application because it's so close to Israel? And the unlearned baker says, Don't worry, I set aside challah. Because if he didn't, then rabbinically we have a problem. Being that it's only a rabbinic law, we don't have to do it again. From a state of doubt, just as we learned earlier that in Israel, the Jew is not suspected with regard to truma because of the seriousness of the transgression, so also the Jew is not suspected in Syria on Chala, even though it's only a rabbinic law. Tesvav 15, the closing paragraph. When a person purchases bread 
from a baker in the diaspora. He must set aside chala just in case the baker didn't do it. We're talking about a baker who's not learned, even though he says, I separated chala, but we have to separate it. Nowadays, part of the job of a mashgiach in a bakery is to make sure the chala is taken. But if somebody purchases from bread from an individual, certainly I'm a sarachetz. If somebody takes hospitality from an unlearned individual, and the guy says, "Listen, I know what I'm doing. I took chala, being that he's not a professional, but he's an individual. Certainly, if he's a host." We don't have to do it again, but we can trust him and take him at his word. Why? Because even in the case of Chala, an unlearned person is believed in Chutzlaretz, in the diaspora. End of chapter 8.